We spent five weeks in Chiang Mai and were amazed by how it met our every need and want. It's walkable, has delicious, inexpensive food, award-winning coffee shops, night markets, a vibrant old town, friendly people, efficient and affordable medical care, and so much more. Join us as we share it all. Welcome back to Finding Gina Marie. We share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. Thailand was at the top of our place that we wanted to visit in Southeast Asia, and it did not disappoint. We'll break down everything that we love about Chiang Mai so that it's at the top of your list too. And for more logistical information, check out our video called the top 22 tips that you're not going to want to miss. And stick around to the end where we talk all about prices. We stayed in a modern hipster area called Nimin. This area is bounded by Hue Kaoyao Road on the north and sandwiches Nimin Hemen Road on the east and west sides. The village on the east side was where we walked, dined, and explored most of the time. So if all you want to do is chill and enjoy a variety of restaurants, you never even have to leave this area. Yeah, it's a little focused on tourists, and you won't get the cheapest Thai cuisine here. But we loved avoiding crossing busy multi-lane streets when we wanted our morning coffee or a quick dinner. Our apartment building even had a back gate that let us walk through another Palm Springs complex as a shortcut. Our Airbnb at Palm Springs Nim and Fountain wasn't the cheapest one, but it had a gym, a pool, and as much bottled water as we needed, which meant we didn't need to haul two liter plastic bottles every day from a store. If you're looking for someplace else, there's a backpacker area that's also cool, that's even cheaper. And staying in Old City is also about the same price as Nimmin. Since we scheduled medical exams at the Chiang Mai Ram Medical Center, it was convenient that our location was only 15 minute walk from that place. And walking 15 minutes more gets you to the Three Kings Monument in Old City. Watch your step though, you'll have to walk on the side of the road and sometimes sidewalks aren't in great condition. And between Nimmin and Old City, we found plenty of photo-worthy sites, including the Maipang River, the Old Wall, and several temples that we could pop in and out of. Pro tip, wearing sandals makes it easier to quickly visit the inside of the temples. The city is much bigger than Nimmin, but it's still very walkable. You'll also see plenty of tuk-tuks and red trucks around if you want to get off of your feet. And we also recommend Grab, which is what we use so that we didn't have to negotiate price. As you're walking around, you'll see that massage and spa treatments are available everywhere. I don't know if we can say we've seen Thailand because we don't have any recommendations for any of them. That's because Kevin doesn't enjoy being pampered. And apparently Judy doesn't like doing things alone. We have to do our thing together, so she didn't go by herself. I did go to Nim and Nails and get a Manny Petty, and that was a nice treat. It's the first time I think I've ever indulged in anything like that during our travels. And I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that's right. No, no, no. Just north of Nimmin is the Maya Mall with several floors and a basement level. And we don't usually wander malls and we have no space for buying more stuff, but Maya Mall was convenient for a few reasons. First of all, we wanted to get a small dedicated camera for B-roll shots and there happened to be a camera shop in this mall. It was also nice that we were able to get our visa photos here so we could extend our visa. Of course, there's clothing everywhere in Chiang Mai, including places that will hand make sandals for you, so you don't need to go to a mall. But some of our viewers recommended Keen sandals, so Kevin finally broke down and bought a pair. I really love them, and I regret that I waited so long. They're incredibly practical when you're visiting temples and have to take your shoes off and on. And I was also able to replace my water bottle, which was a bonus. Links to Kevin's new sandals, my water bottle, and our new DJI Osmo Pocket 3 camera are on our gear list. And like most malls, of course there's going to be a food court, but this one was pristine. It had high quality Japanese food, Michelin guide restaurants, with delicious and not overly expensive street food too. We were pleasantly surprised to find Japan's cocoa curry here, and we had to stop in for some pork tonkatsu curry. We're here at the Maya Mall, and 
interestingly, we got some Japanese food, which I didn't expect uh, from Coco Curry, which was delicious. But we came across this uh, arcade. And what's here? Karaoke booths. Uh, there's video karaoke for like single people. And then there's a whole set of booths that are for a party. And actually, it's not even just one person. Most of these booths have two. Oh, I guess they people. And it's, I don't know, I didn't expect them all to be filled, but they are, and it's pretty cool. And if you want to catch a movie, you can certainly do that at Maya Mall. They even showed off some incredibly luxury seats that you can sit in while you're watching your movie. There's also a huge international and pricey supermarket called Rimping. Since we were here so long, I ended up getting a bottle of whiskey to review for Whiskey Riffs, a channel that you can check out if you want. There's a link in the description. Crossing the busy intersection to Maya Mall was time consuming due to its multiple traffic signals. But one Nimmin shopping center was five minutes from our apartment and filled with tourist friendly restaurants and shops. You can walk in nearly any direction and find something interesting to explore. We love getting smoothies and frozen fruit juices from all the local stands and nearly every restaurant. There were steamed buns, kao soy, Thai pork with basil, pad thai, ramen, dumplings, as well as a few western restaurants. So you could go from stall to stall and nibble a little of everything to end up with a full meal. There's even mango sticky rice for dessert. In our little east side Nimmin village area were some very cool coffee shops. Graf is one of the first places we tried. So we're at Graf, which is right across from our Airbnb. It's a coffee shop with very neat coffees. Big menu, like cheesecake factory style menu. So many offerings. And this is the magma, which is espresso, avocado, and almond milk. And it's a combination of hot and cold. So that's interesting. Because it's so many layers, like you have to really sip to get all of them. But yeah, you can get the espresso, and, but there's a little hint of the avocado below that. All right, Judy's turn for her craft coffee. What, what concoction did you get? This one is Indian, and it's cold brew, pumpkin seeds, and pumpkin chips, and then some whipped cream. Oh, that's really good. Um, it's chai, but, and of course, this is pumpkin chips and pumpkin seeds. I mean, I don't need all the whipped cream, but. Does anyone need whipped cream? I mean. It's really good. Yeah. Our first breakfast was at Manifresto because it had great reviews. It was only when we got there that we saw that they didn't sell coffee. So I was on the chopping block for that decision. But they had two full pages of their menu that are various types of frozen drinks and juices. There is no caffeine in fruit drinks. <laughs> True. And if you're a digital nomad, Chiang Mai is loaded with shared workspaces if you don't want to be stuck in your Airbnb or hotel the whole time you're working from here. Chiang Mai is really a very international destination and you can find food of nearly every kind of culture that you could possibly imagine. There's street food, super local restaurants with the small plastic chairs, Michelin Guide Thai restaurants, night markets, food courts, and every type of Western, Japanese, Indian, or Australian food you might be looking for. One of my first meals was at Northern Thai Cuisine. Spicy pork th Northern Thai curry. See how spicy it is. Whenever the wait server says, Do you like spicy? I always worry a little bit. Especially here where the review said it was pretty spicy food. Okay. I got medium spicy. That was a kick and a half. You're trying this. Holy cow. Is it good? Yes, I think. <laughs> it is a lot spicier than I thought. Holy cow. Tasty, but I'm glad I got rice with it. One of the most common foods you're going to find in Chiang Mai is cow soy. And on our way back from extending our visa, we stopped at Always Cafe Thai Food. It was a short walk from the Old City South Gate, where of course, that's what we had. And we cooled it off with some refreshing strawberry frappes. So we're at Always Thai Food, and I got the chicken cow soy. And it's got a lovely little flower decoration and very nice crunchy noodles. And the chicken has a little bit of a kick to it, not too intense. 
very rich flavor, nice spice, like medium spice, and sweet tender chicken. One of the better ones we've had. Enjoying it. There were a lot of restaurants that we went to that had names we couldn't translate or pronounce, but this smaller local restaurant had hand laid curry with sticky rice, and I had spicy northern sausage, which I enjoy at several places and was delicious everywhere. After one of our tours in Old City, we stopped at a very local restaurant near the north side of Old City and enjoyed a filling meal that cost only 40 to 50 baht, which is less than $1.25, and that included shrimp. I wasn't so happy when it arrived because none of it was peeled, but uh, it was cheap. <laughs> that looks like more work than you wanted. Yes, I should have realized, but. <laughs> and I think we actually ended up swapping meals, so I ended up peeling all the shrimp. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Our favorite slightly upscale Khao Soi restaurant that we went back to again and again was Khao Soi Nimen. It's a Michelin guide restaurant that's so popular that you have to take a number to wait for a table. Fortunately, there's those little plastic chairs that you can sit on to wait, and the line does move pretty quickly. We waited in line for a table for a long time, but it was well worth it. <laughs> I highly recommend the icy and refreshing butterfly PT there. And the stewed beef khao soy is very tasty. And the meat just falls apart. It's very, very good. The pad thai here was also delicious. I don't think we had bad pad thai anywhere, though. No. We also ate some ramen that competed with some of the best ramen we had in Japan. We had soy ramen and a spicy ramen that was comforting and satisfying at 86 ramen. And Hankatsu style tonkatsu and spicy tonkatsu at Sanmai ramen. Both delicious and their gyoza was really unique with his better twill on top. Five weeks without pizza is practically blasphemous for us. So we found this little place called Why Not? Authentic pizza, pasta, and delicious wine. And we love the Caesar salad too. You could linger over your meal here for hours, which we did. It had a perfect vibe. And of course, if burgers or steaks are your thing, Chiang Mai has those too. Old City Chiang Mai is encircled by ancient walls and moats and is the historical heart of Chiang Mai. It was founded in 1296 and has over 300 temples inside its walls. It was the center of what formerly was the Lana Kingdom. Old City is very walkable and bike friendly, but it can be very hot. We recommend you bring a water bottle when you're navigating through all the temples, alleyways, and the night market. In the heart of Old City is the Three Kings Monument, which commemorate the founding of Chiang Mai. It's a symbol of unity and cooperation since these three kings work together to design and establish the city. So if you've never been to a night market, the Sunday night market in Chiang Mai is one that you really want to see. It's one of the most popular places to visit in the Old City. We're excited to be heading to the night market, finally. <laughs> the Sunday night market. Sunday night market, the busy one. The booths take over the main road from the east side Taifei Gate to Wat Pra Sing Temple and extends out on several side streets. Wear comfy shoes because it's so crowded that you'll be shuffling along. And there are multiple food court areas which can get very crowded very quickly. So what do you have there, Kev? I have some fried fish, no idea what kind of fish, with a little spicy sauce on it. But it looked good, it looked very authentic. The sauce is a little sweet, I'm expecting it to be um, spicier. The bread is really good. It actually looked like a sweet and sour sauce. Yeah. So that's fish inside there. Yeah, yeah it looks like it's a, um, could be a catfish, could be, could be anything, I don't know. It's very light, very tasty. Good choice. Very happy with it. You haven't had enough fish here. If you go to these food court areas early, you can fill up before they get too busy and make it hard to move around. Okay. So we got the, uh, the grilled meat and vegetables. Yes, and it's got kind of a barbecue on it. Mmm. That is so tender. Yeah? So you need to, while, while the camera's on, you need to try some of my fish. Nice, huh? It's very light. Well, that's a thick, thick crust of batter. Yeah. But the fish itself fish is itself really good. light. Mm -hmm. We were there at 5.30 and that was a good thing. The food here is tasty and cheap. In addition to a lot of cheap eats, there's traditional Thai crafts, clothing and souvenirs, many of which are handmade by local artisans. It brings 
small bills so you can donate to the musicians along the way, many of whom are disabled. <laughs> The lively music contributes to the energetic vibe of the whole market area. And although this might feel a bit touristy, many stalls are run by local families and artists. So this is a great place to get a sense of who the Thai people really are. A much lesser night market is Think Park, across from the Maya Mall if you want to stay in the Nimmin area for quick street food and browse for souvenirs. If you're interested in seeing temples in Chiang Mai, you don't have to go very far. In fact, right after you're finished eating at the night market, you can bump into various temples all along the route. And it was fun to take some small detours and see some of them. And Wat Phan Tao has a beautiful golden spire several rows of bells that you'll hear people ringing as they walk by them. Also, one of the largest food courts is surrounding this temple. made it here in the daylight, but the gold of Wat Phra Singh's series of buildings is stunning. It's near the end of the Sunday market and has a lovely walking path with Buddhist monk statues. It was built in the 14th century and is the focal point for Thai New Year when the Buddha here is paraded throughout the streets. Wat Chiang Man is the oldest temple in Chiang Mai, built in 1297, and originally the royal residence of the king. Wat Chat Lin is a small temple embedded within a local neighborhood. Wat Chedi Luang is a monumental temple complex, and its name means the Temple of the Big Stupa. Central to this complex is the famous pagoda, which is what Chedi means. At its peak, it once stood 260 feet high, but it's now been reduced to 197 feet. There's been some restoration to this UNESCO site, but the foundation is damaged and people are no longer allowed inside due to safety reasons. Inside a shrine here is a city pillar, which is believed to protect the city. Unfortunately, only men are allowed into this building. But if you're a woman, here's some footage of the inside. This temple has an active monk community, and you can have a chat with the monks if you wish, between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. daily. these temples have Naga serpents surrounding the staircase leading to the temple. These mythical creatures are commonly used in Lana temple architecture because they are believed to protect the temple and its visitors. And lastly, here's Wat Lak Moli, an active Buddhist temple over 600 years old and founded by the ruler of the Lana kingdom. talk about how much we paid, we're excited to share that we've started our own absolutely free community forum that we are calling La Familia. You can ask questions about trip planning and all things related to travel there. A video with the details is linked in the description below. Our Airbnb that we stayed in for 37 days was $1,644.86, which is $44.46 per night. The price is a little high for Thailand, but it was a convenient location and we got free bottled water throughout our stay. 
Extending our stay in Thailand cost 1,900 Thai baht a piece, and that needed to be paid in cash at the immigration office. Our historic bike tour cost $96, which was a bit too pricey for what we got from it. But it's on sale now for $44.16 per person. The only temples we had to pay for were the Silver Temple, costing a donation of 50 Thai baht a piece, and Wat Chedi Luang, which is 40 baht per person. My regular Mani Petty was 600 Thai baht. If you want to slow things down a bit, we took a countryside tour and had some very local experiences. It cost us $65.95 for both of us for four hours. There's a link to the video in the description below. At Roastery Coffee Shop, cappuccino and flat white cost 176 Thai baht total. Mama's Sandwich Thai Pork Bagel and Kevin's Ham, Egg and Cheese Bagel were 179 baht apiece and kept us full until dinner. At Always Cafe, we paid 320 baht for two cow soy meals and two strawberry frappes. A warming bowl of Japanese ramen at 86 ramen was 99 baht for soy ramen and spicy ramen was 129 baht. Hakata Tonkatsu Ramen and Spicy Ramen both were 185 baht apiece at San Mai Ramen Nimmin's. Pork gyoza was 120 baht. Our total at Cow Soy Nimmin was 505 baht, which breaks down to 175 baht for its beef cow soy, 95 baht for spring rolls, braised sliced beef with rice was 140 baht, 75 baht for butterfly pea tea, and 10 baht for bottled water. Why Not's extra large pizza with plenty of leftovers was 390 baht and a glass of their wine cost 210 baht. Caesar salad for sharing was 200 baht. Smoothies at One Nimmin were 50 baht. And you can choose whether you want sugar in it or not, or even yogurt. Wonder Smoothie Sol sells their fruit frappes for 60 baht. And Coco Curry at Maya Mall was 210 baht. At one of the restaurants with a name we couldn't pronounce, Han Lei Curry with sticky rice and my spicy northern sausage with rice were under $7, including two waters. For more about our experiences in Chiang Mai, check out the playlist linked below. Next week, we will be in Hoi An, back to Vietnam at the recommendation of several of our viewers, so you're not going to want to miss those episodes. Subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, North and South Vietnam were very different from Central, and we're really loving our time here so far. And don't forget to visit FindingGeneMarie.com, where you can find articles, tips, and our community forum. Until next time. Until next time. I think I've ever indulged in anything like that during our travels. And I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're done. We're done. We're, we're gonna we're gonna get this done so quickly too. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she says K. Still laughing. There we go. That was like a Seinfeld outtake. We're never gonna get going. <laughs> We've lost Elaine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Should we do that again? <laughs> Without all the laughter. <laughs> but I do need to wipe my eyes. <laughs>